How do you know if your sump is too big? Well, mine was, and we'll take a look at the difference it made when I moved to a smaller one. I raise uh, angelfish, the largest producer of angels in the United States. I feed extreme feed because I get better production off my breeders, a better survival rate off my babies, and overall the feed tends to be cleaner and doesn't foul my vats as much, and it's just a better feed. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today we're going to talk about my 120 reef and some of the hard lessons that I've learned maybe help you out a little bit along the way. Maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes that, that I made as I was learning about reefing. When I first got into the hobby, I was thrilled to death when I could set up a reef aquarium and just have a thriving system where the fish would live and the corals would live and, and, I, and maybe things weren't going great, but things would stay alive. You, many people try to rush it and when I was in the retail business, folks would have failure after failure after failure because they tried to go they try to go too fast. So, you know, over the years, I've gotten well past that, and I've had some success uh, with my reef aquariums that you've heard me mention maybe in the past a little bit that, you know, I've got this, uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but I've got a sailfin tang on there that's been living with me for about 10 years now. So, uh, you know, I, I've figured out at least how to keep the fish alive. Um, but there's something else that I have learned. And that is, is that no matter how much you love this hobby, no matter how much you tell yourself that you are going to do exactly what you already know it will take for your aquarium to thrive and prosper, if it's not set up properly, you won't do it. And, and I have learned that the hard way because there's, there's nobody who loves this as, any more than I do. But what happens is, is if there's something that's difficult to reach over time, I just reach less and less often. I find excuses to put it off or I just find myself not thinking about it. And then after a while, it becomes to where you've just forgotten about, oh, yeah, there's a, uh, 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 a filter back there or, uh, you, know, you know, a filter sock that needs to be changed. But, man, I hate pulling that thing out of there. So you just don't do it. Uh, and the end result is, is, is that the tank suffers for it. And of course, we're all busy anymore. I mean, who's not busy, right? Uh, I've got a, a full-time job in addition to FinCasters. Uh, FinCasters itself takes a fair amount of time if you want to devote uh, any effort to making the editing looking the way that I like for it to look, the research and so forth. Uh, and then also, of course, we've got a small family business where we, where we maintain aquariums. And granted, my son does most of the work on that. We're going to hear from my son, Ben, here in just a moment. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, I don't have as much time as I would like to spend on my aquarium. So once again, if it's not easy to do, you wind up not doing it. That all is a long way of me saying I needed to move towards more automation with my setup. Now, to prove how bad my tank had become, I recorded my thoughts just before we started making wholesale changes to my 120 reef. There's one thing I've learned about myself as an aquarium keeper. It's that between my schedule in my tendencies, I need more automation. And the sump that I have is too big. The only room I have to add anything that might be automated is that space right there. And that's not enough. And then the other thing is that the plumbing on this aquarium, the way we did it originally with all these pipes in the way and everything, made it almost impossible to work on. You can't do anything, so then you just, it's so difficult you don't do it. And you can see this is just, it's all gone. It's all gone to crap. Okay, tomorrow this tank will look completely different. It's my 120 reef. It's been set up this way for a couple of years. It's been reasonably successful. The fish, as you can see, have been extremely happy. I set it up because I wanted to see fish going in and out of the rocks. See my hippo tang doing that. The mushrooms have been flourishing. Polyps have grown like crazy on the rocks. The frog spawn has been doing great. My newest prize, my clownfish, my frostbite clownfish have been hosting and doing very well in the frog spawn. But there are some issues with this tank that I can't get over. For one thing, the back wall 
very hard to clean. I can't reach it. The magnet won't pull that off of there. And I think I want to go for more of a minimalist design. So that will get changed. Okay, so that was pretty bad, right? I mean, I, I know it was bad, and I'll be honest with you. I let the tank go for a little while right before I took the video because I wanted to show you how bad it had become. I typically didn't live with that amount of algae on the glass and so forth, and the sump needed to be wiped down a long time ago. But honestly, I was so fed up with it, as you could hear in my commentary. So, um, but that's what the tank had looked like. However, in order to make the change to the smaller sump, and in this case we used a zero edge, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, I had to pull the entire tank because you couldn't slide the sump in underneath the stand. The old one was too big, and the only way to get it out was to pull the tank off the top, which meant taking out the water, taking out the rock, taking out the fish and the coral, keeping them alive, pull the tank, pull the plumbing, redo the tank, redo the plumbing, and then with the new sump. But first, I want to show you the awesome sump that I selected to go with my setup. All right, guys, my name is Ben Carlin. My dad called me and he told me that he wanted to overhaul his sump setup. For the longest time, he's had this massively oversized sump underneath his 120, the 48 by 24 dimension model there. And it has been the world's biggest pain in the butt because there is just simply not enough room to maintain anything underneath there. The sump that was there before was too tall, it was too long, you couldn't fit any reactors in inside anything else. Um, so I called my friends over at Zero Edge and they hooked us up with this amazing sump. We use these for a lot of our client tanks. Uh, they're incredibly well built with very thick acrylic. Uh, this particular model is going to be 26 by 14 by 16. Um, so we're going to be using just a little bit more than half of the space underneath the stand there, which I think is going to be really great. Um, I'm going to walk you through the setup really quick and just kind of show you everything that comes with one of these sumps. Um, so starting off, we have our filter sock chamber here with our Micron bag down inside. Um, what I really like about these, and I've used so many filter sock hangers in the past, they're always tipping over, they're always bending. If you can get a side view of the acrylic here, this is a thick slab of acrylic and they have it cut in so that we can drop our filter sock right into place and it works great. Um, now where a lot of sump companies are going to right now is this new style where you have your water being injected down and you're actually breaking, or the water is being dispersed underneath the water so you don't have any of that splashing sound. So as the water comes through your drains, it's gonna fill up in this chamber, pour over your filter sock, and then work its way into the other chambers of the sump. So one thing we do have as a safety measure is you do have these uh, overflow holes in the event that you saturate your filter sock and this chamber overfills. You don't have to worry about that basically filling up and flooding. The water will pass through these holes right here, but as long as you're diligent, that won't ever be a factor anyway. Okay, so in the second chamber here, we have a lot of features kind of packed into what we'd refer to as the protein skimmer chamber. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the little probe holder that's attached here. Uh, so if you've got your Apex or any of your uh, aquarium controllers, you have room for three probes in this particular model that you can drop into those three slots. Uh, those three slots are located on your adjustable weir right here. This is really nice. Um, most protein skimmers have a setting that they want to be run at. So some skimmers need a lower water level, some skimmers need a higher water level. So depending on what your skimmer calls for, and it just kind of depends from brand to brand, you can adjust this to um, meet its demand, and this will basically change the water level in this section of the sump. We have two little simple thumb screws here, so you can just tighten those guys up, and there you go, your protein skimmer will be running at that water depth. As you pass through here, we're gonna have this black mesh um, this is really great. This is basically your bubble diffuser. So any micro bubbles that you're having coming out of your protein skimmer, anybody who's ever broken in a protein skimmer before knows that can really be a pain in the butt. This is basically going to break all those down before we pass over into our final chamber, which is our return chamber. And of course, with uh, the same as the, the first chamber with the filter sock, in the event that this gets saturated with any type of detritus or excess waste, um, we do have the pass-throughs cut through up top here so that you won't actually flood out in the event that the water can't pass through that, that area. So there you go, that's a little walk through our new Zero Edge sump. We are super excited to get this underneath the tank. We've got all the guys in the other room getting all the plumbing together, some gate valves, some check valves, so we're gonna have a, um, 
a much more complete system than my dad had before. Uh, and the biggest key that I kind of just want to talk about here as our last little note is one big philosophy we have is maintaining your automation. So the big issue my dad was having was he didn't have enough space to have a dosing pump. He didn't have enough space to have all of the essential little things that keep your aquarium running on a day-to-day -day basis. And with anything, if you can automate it, it usually is gonna make it more stable for the aquarium. So when I say maintain your automation, instead of going through and actually having to physically do all the individual tiny little tasks on a day-to-day -day basis, if you can have the tank doing it and what you're doing is monitoring to make sure it's always happening, um, it's a much better philosophy. It's gonna go give you a much more stable aquarium and a much happier reef. So thanks again to my son Ben for the description on the new sump and also thanks to Zero Edge for hooking us up with a beautiful sump that will be perfect for my system. As always, I'll put more information about Zero Edge in the description down below. Man, I am so embarrassed at how bad the plumbing looked on that aquarium. But again, that's what happens. You get in a hurry and you say, well, you know, I'll work around that. That's not so bad. And probably that was a a 10-hour job and we decided to do it in six hours we got behind it was a Saturday we were out of time and and so we just let it be and you think well I'm really dedicated so I'll work around this well guess what you won't I didn't and you won't either over time if it's a pain in the butt you just won't do it so bottom line I'm embarrassed but I did show it to you and coming up in the next FinCast I want to show you how we did everything I described we pulled the aquarium and we put the new sump in and we set up some automation and we'll be covering that in the next FinCast. So please look forward to that. In the meantime, please click around. Please check out the blog at FinCasters.com. Find me on Instagram at, at FinCasters and the same thing on Twitter. And I'll see you in the next FinCast.